Today we're going to be building and setting up a tiny beast retro gaming machine. Come and check it out. Hello amigos, how are you all doing? My name is Enrique and welcome to my channel. Yes, as the title says, today I'm going to show you how you can turn a small Raspberry Pi into a beast of a retro gaming machine for less than 100 bucks. First, the things that we're going to need. A Raspberry Pi, I am using the Raspberry Pi 3, but you can also use the newest P4. A case, any P case can work. I choose this one looking like the old school Nintendo to give it more of a retro look. But there are tons of options either on Amazon or on eBay to choose from. You're going to be needing a power adapter with 5 volts and 2.5 amperes because the Raspberry Pi doesn't come with one, an HDMI cable, a controller, and of course a PC to be able to load the software and later on your totally legit runs of games that you already own, and a micro SD card, minimum of 8 gigabytes, but I recommend at least 32 gigabytes because this SD card will be holding the operating system, emulators, and game files. So, a bigger car, more place for games. If at any time you're having problems for in this tutorial, pause the video, take your time, smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm, and if nothing works, leave a comment down below, I will be glad to help you out on any questions that you have. You are also going to need a keyboard for the initial setup, and a controller, of course. You can get any wire controller that you prefer. You can find really cheap controllers to use on Amazon, and if you even prefer, you can even go wireless with a Bluetooth one. But check first that the model of Raspberry Pi that you use supports Bluetooth connection. For this video, I'm going to be using my Xbox controller right here. To assemble it is really easy. You only need to screw the Raspberry Pi into the case, and that's it. Some cases come with these small heat sinks to apply into your ARM-based CPU, but the Raspberry Pi doesn't get too warm, so it's not 100% necessary. After that, all you need is to start with the software. So let's jump right into the PC. To get RetroPie, that is the to get RetroPie, that is the Linux compilation that we're going to be installing on the Raspberry Pi, visit the official RetroPie internet site. Click the big red download button for Raspberry Pi 2 or 3 or the model of Raspberry Pi that you're using and save a file into your computer. Put this file somewhere where you can easily find it, such as your desktop, for example. RetroPie uses a front end that displays a graphical menu that lists available games on the system. Let's the user select the game of their choosing with a game controller and then run the game on the appropriate emulator automatically. In RetroPie, this is called Emulation Station. There is a bunch of consoles supported and you can check them all out in the official wiki. Links in the description. Now we're going to download a software that will write the RetroPie software this image into your SD card. If you're using a macOS, you can download the Apple Pie Baker, and if you're on Windows, you can download Win32 this image. I will be using a Windows PC for this tutorial. Now you can extract the files that you have downloaded, use it at the compression tool like WinRAR or 7-zip. Next, you need to run the installation program for the SD card image writer tool that you downloaded, install it, run the tool, and please be sure that the, you select the right device where your SD card is, because if you pick the wrong device, this program will erase all of the data. When it's finished, you can add the card into your Raspberry Pi on the micro SD slot. Now, plug in your keyboard and controller if you're going to be using a wireless controller. You don't need this step, we're going to be making the configuration later on. You can also connect the internet cable if you're going to use it, Otherwise, if you are setting up a Wi-Fi connection, we're going to make it soon enough. Connect your HDMI cable to the TV or monitor that you are using, and then we are ready to plug the power cable. The Pi has not on-off switch, so it will be on as long as it's plugged. If everything went as planned when writing the RetroPie software to the SD card, after a few moments, the emulation station front end will start up and you will see a white gray screen that says, welcome. What we do now is dependent and if you are using a wireless or a USB controller. For a wireless, you will need to have pressed F4 on your keyboard. You are now at the Linux command prompt. Type this exactly, case sensitive sudo, right here. Then hit enter. This is the RetroPie setup program. Using the arrows on your keyboard to find the Bluetooth option and select it. You will have to switch the controller into discovery mode. Then you can search for it using the Bluetooth utility and sync with it. 
After that, restart your Raspberry Pi. To do this, exit the configuration program and type this into the command prompt. After you turn it on again, it will be at the welcome screen once more. Now it's the same for both wireless and USB controllers. This time, instead of hitting F4, tap a button on your Bluetooth gamepad until it syncs up with your Pi. Then hold down a button on the gamepad until the emulation session detects this, and it will ask you a long list of questions that let you assign which button goes to which control, like for example up, down, A, B, any button like that. Don't mess this up or you may have to unplug the Pi and start the button assignment once more. Once that is working, you will see a menu called RetroPi. In there, select Raspi Config. You will probably want to change a few settings here. The first is localization options, which you will want to configure if you don't live in the UK. Set up your keyboard layout there, depending on where you live and your time zone. The second thing is to change is under advanced options and then overscan. When it asks you if you would like to enable compensation for displays with overscan, select no if you are hooked up to an HDMI TV or monitor. After you are done setting that up, back out of those menus and select finish. Then restart once more your Raspberry Pi. If you have a USB controller, hit the start button and choose restart. If you are in a text prompt, then use the sudo command previously mentioned. After the restart, navigate to the RetroPie menu in Emulation Station, then select the Wi-Fi option at the bottom. This will bring up the Wi-Fi configuration program. Search for your access point and enter your password. Then you should be pretty much up and running with the internet connection. And now we are almost done, my friends. It's time to copy your totally legit ROMs into your Raspberry Pi. Don't forget that the games that you have copied have to be the games that you own a physical copy of. Jones one more into your PC or Mac. Then open the Windows Explorer and type this into the location bar at the top. And if you are on a Mac, open Finder, select Go from the menu at the top of the new window, then select Connect to the server. In that box, type this and click on Connect. If you change it, the system host name in the settings, you will need to type that instead of RetroPie. Now that you are connected to the Pi, you can click on the Rooms Shared Folder. You will see a list of folders named after various game consoles, like for example, Atari 2600 and SNES. Drag and drop your totally legit room files or disk images that you have into the proper console directories of the Pi. For example, put uh, NES ROMs files which go into the NES directory of the Pi and SMC, Super NES ROMs, files will be in the SNES directory. You are all done, my friends. Now it's time to sit back and enjoy your retro games. And if you are 30 or old like myself, you're going to enjoy once more like the child at Epic's Quest of Zelda Link to the Past or getting angry at the hard levels of Super Mario World. And if you're younger, taking a look at what your parents used to play when they was as old as you are right now. Thanks for watching, guys. I really hope you have enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and leave a thumbs up in the video if you like it. Now guys, let's take a look at some of the comments from last video. Ah, oh, this chair, killing me. I need to get monetization so I can buy one new chair. So guys, Mix Lodi, I miss you last time. Nice car, however, let's see what AMD comes out with the 3090 benchmarks and maybe the 3080 Ti or something. Yeah. It's crazy with the graphics card right now. I, I'm going to wait to see what happens. Now, Matthew Gallardo Music. I will be getting an RTX 3080 eventually, so I'm excited about these amazing graphic cards. Um, looks really, really good. I will love to have one, and I will love to have one already to make benchmarks for you guys. I don't have one. But to tell you the truth, Matthew, I'm going to wait a little bit I really want to see what AMD puts on the table. Uh, Faster78, nice video, and by the way, Sony forever. <laughs> I know you're a Sony fanboy, my friend. And uh, Laura Justetti, uh, yeah, videos, Enrique, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much. Thanks, everybody, for the support. And now it's the end, my friend. Click the like button if you like it, dislike if you didn't like it, and like always, guys. See you on the next time. Bye bye. By the way, guys, if you enjoyed the content like this one and you want that I make you more tutorials like the one that you watched today, let me know in the comments down below, okay? And now, bye-bye.